Heartbeat of Faith, Who Deserves a Chance? I'm Kylie Metzger. I'm Naomi Walker. I'm Fernando P. And I'm Louis Acosta. So, imagine for a second that you have the choice of choosing a person that will get a heart transplant. This choice will not only affect the life of one person, but it will also affect the life of the people surrounding this person. Um, looking at all the information we're given, like it's hard determining whether a person has to be chosen on based on different factors. So we have five people on the line, and only one of them gets to be saved by the heart transplant. Candidate A, age 41, is a recovering alcoholic who has a child age six. She's also widowed for four years. Candidate B, a man, 49, is poor, he suffers from high blood pressure, and he stays in town because of his wife for 38 years, was in a nursing home after a violent car crash. Candidate C, woman age 30, has no time for family due to her hectic 80 hour work week. She smokes a pack a day and drinks socially. Contestant B, a father of three girls, 45 years old, and is relatively good in health. He does not drink or smoke, and he wants to be with his family for a long time. Contestant E, woman age 35, no health is suffering from chest pains and has no, no family to speak to in the health insurance. Who we chose? We chose candidate B because, I mean D because. So for the scientific viewpoint of why we chose candidate B, he has good health, his age, he's relatively young, he's 45 years old, and he has no past with drugs. <coughs> this means that none of his liver or organs are damaged due to past mistakes, drugs, or alcohol abuse. His body is young enough and he's fit enough to handle the stress of this dramatic procedure. As you can see from this chart, this is a diagram of what a heart transplant procedure looks like. The social effect of why we chose candidate D was because when having a heart transplant, it is a major procedure and can be very traumatic and stressful. Knowing the possibilities that is a, that is a life-threatening procedure can be very stressful and make a very big impact on your mental health. When choosing a candidate, we chose the best recipient to receive this heart transplant because one of the main factors was having a support system. Candidate B has three daughters and a wife, and he's best fit because he has a good support system and over 100 of good life to return back to after being done with surgery. As you can see in this chart here, um, a lot of people after surgery get very depressed. You could see that 9% have severe levels of depression, moderate depression, and mid depression. Some people have no depression, and that is because they have a good support system and because they have people to go back to after they are done with the surgery. So we also have to take into consideration the economic part of why we chose Kennedy. The first, he has a stable um, job, meaning that his job actually covers 70% of the heart transplant as insurance. So he would only have to pay 30%. And as we see here, the most costing organ transplant is actually the heart at $1.6 million. So, sorry, since the insurance covers 70% of his transplant, he would only have to worry about the 30%. And since he's already a wealthy man, he wouldn't have to worry much. So we can also take into consideration the long-term healthcare costs. Since he's already a healthy person, he doesn't have to purchase or have to deal with any other injuries that he might have to pay for medically. Um, other candidates with chest pain or like past tobacco usage would also have to pay for those on top of the heart transplant. And some don't even have insurance. So it could cost overall more for them than it could for this guy. And the economic productivity. Since he's 45 years old, he's at the prime of his working age. So he has a stable job and he contributes to the economy. This heart transplant allows him to teach his kids how to also contribute to the economy, which creates three new members to society that can also you know, A, the economy. All right, looking at the religious um, standpoint of things, um, this man embodies the important religious values like his family, his responsibility, and his selflessness. And at every religion, it is really important to take care of your family, be responsible for them, and being selfless when you take acts to take care of them. Um, this can be shown through the man's actions as he's a hardworking man that provides for his family and also he's willing to take this surgery so that he's able to spend more time with him. Um, he embraces his life as sacred because this is a man that
takes care of what he does as a citizen, as a human being, and he's a person that follows the law, he's never been in trouble with the law, he's a good guidance to his kids. Lastly, we have stewardship over his body. Um, this is a man that's maintained a good health and healthy habits. He's always, he's never drank, never smoked, and he maintains healthy habits to keep good conditions physically. Um, so this is a good choice when it comes to the religious viewpoint of things because it's a good guidance and important for his family because he sets the example over their spiritual principles. In conclusion, when choosing a candidate for gaining a heart transplant, you can't simply just base it off their pity story. You have to take into consideration more factors, such as their economic, social, religious, and scientific factors. This will lead to the most fair and reasonable candidate. Thank you. Thank you.